Member for Macquarie. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. I grew up listening, firstly, to my mum's records, sitting cross-legged on the floor, and at some point I was allowed to put the vinyl on the record player myself <laughs> when I was, could be trusted not to drop the needle too hard. The Seekers sing their big hits. The record that came out in 1965, when I was two, was one of the very first records I listened to. A black and white photo of them in full voice was on the cover with a red edge around it, and it still brings back memories. It had a lot of content very suitable for small children. Waltzing Matilda, Lemon Tree, Morning Town Ride. It also had a world of our own, and I'll never find another you. I played it, sang along to it, learnt the early principles of harmony from Judith and the boys, Keith Podger, Bruce Woodley, Bruce Woodley and Athel Guy. Uh, but it's Georgie Girl I remember hearing on the radio and loving the beat and loving the tune. At the time, I had no understanding that these songs were breaking ground internationally and putting Australian voices on the world stage. I just liked to sing along. My husband was much more aware of their stature than me at around about the same time. He was part of the Navy band that performed on stage with the Seekers at that famous 1967 Maya Music Bowl performance. I think it's the biggest audience he's ever performed to. And it was immortalised, as it was in the Guinness Book of Records the following year, as the biggest concert attendance ever in the Southern Hemisphere. Given the influence of Judith Durham on my early musical life, it was a real privilege to represent the Prime Minister at the Victorian State Memorial in her honour. And what a celebration of Judith Durham's life it was, with recognition from the Victorian Governor of her impact on the music scene. We gained insights into the health challenges that Judith had faced with such good humour throughout her life, and also her determination, kindness and generosity. And Athol, Keith and Bruce all demonstrated the affection that they had for Judith and their union. If you hadn't shed a tear before hearing them speak, this part of the night probably tipped a lot of people over. Judith's, Judith's nephew, Tony Sheehan, shared a story about the singer's determination to perform at a jazz club as a young teenager. Apparently, she'd turn up at the same jazz club week after week, and the band leader kept saying, come back next week. When he finally allowed her to perform, you have to wonder how hard he kicked himself for not having said yes a whole lot sooner. Perhaps there's a message there for young performers and bookers alike. The musical tributes were exceptional. Professor Deborah Cheatham, Vicar and Linda Bull, David Campbell with his backing singers providing the harmonies that echoed, the harmony the seekers were so adept at. And Dami Im accompanied by Chong Lim and the Melbourne Symphony Orchestra's String Quartet. Uh, it was a beautiful night, but perhaps the most personal performance was Jelly Bean Blues from Judith's big sister, Beverly Sheehan, accompanied by the syncopators. The whole evening was a very Melbourne tribute, but had the heart of the whole country there to thank Judith's family for the musical gift that she gave the nation, Ballet Judith Durham.